I am Greg, the Greg Reed. I started off playing football for Boys and Girls Club. My mom and my dad coached the team, the Gators. I went to Lyons Middle School, high school, Vikings. From there, I graduated and went to Florida State University. From Florida State University, I played arena football. I played in the NFL for the Rams. I played arena football for the Sharks. Uh, now I'm currently playing for the uh, CFL Montreal Alouettes. Uh, Clive is just a family, family community, you know what I'm saying? My whole, like my grandma, my aunties, everybody, we all stayed up in, on, on the same road. We all stayed within each other. And uh, but that's all we did was play football. We even had like our aunties sometimes and our uncles and, and you know, dads and everybody out there playing with us because it was just so intense. Like everybody used to just come outside and watch us. Like for real, it was, it was like, a, like a Super Bowl every Sunday. All I did was just play, kept playing football, and whatever came out of it, I, I got the best out of it. But, you know, they, uh, Miss, Miss Hill, uh, Miss Bankston, you know, uh, I, was, I wasn't the greatest kid growing up, so they, they, they disciplined me a lot to, uh, to be the man I am today. And, uh, you know, Miss Dart, all my teachers, Miss Cobb, I remember them because, like I said, they, they just impacted me just by making, uh, making the right decision with, with, with school and you know what I'm saying, throughout my life. But, you know, they allowed me to, you know, even if they did take the football, we, we, we would find pine cones, we would find like a bark or something to play football. We, we have race, it was always a competitive thing. And uh, they didn't take that away from us, you know. And so I got up to, uh, to middle school and that's when, that's when I, I felt like it really hit me, like uh, leaving Cliveville and going into a bigger environment around kids that I didn't know. And I remember my mom and dad telling me like, you're not gonna always win every game. It's always gonna be somebody better than you. And I took that like on a whole nother level. I, I felt so disrespected, bro. <laughs> like I was just like, what? There's nobody that can be better than me. So I I remember going, I remember this now. I remember going, you know, on my dirt road and, and just running. Like I, I, I didn't know, you know what I'm saying? Back then I didn't I didn't have a trainer. I didn't, you know what I'm saying? I didn't I didn't look at training, I didn't, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't no YouTube or nothing like that back right. then. So I just used to get on the dirt road, bro, and just literally run and just make cuts, just make cuts, just like pitching myself in the game, you know what I'm saying? And I don't know, just, just hearing that though, it was just like, okay, now I'm facing a real competition and I have to be ready for it, you know what I mean? Absolutely. And that was, uh, that was maybe like uh, sixth grade, going into fifth, sixth grade. First time I saw Greg was at Lowndes Middle School. He was a player, a fantastic player down there as well. Um, he was a kid that was, he, he loved, Phil, he loved football. He, he loved the game, he loved to compete, and he was not scared of nothing. I love Greg Reed. Greg Reed was uh, truly uh, one of the greatest players I've ever seen in high school football. I've never seen him fair catch a punt, here or at FSU. He, he did so much for, for I mean, he played offense, defense, uh, all he he returned all kicks. He was very physical on defense too. And I, I'm telling you, he's a great one. Coach Mack, man, wow, uh, man, I don't think I could have could want you know a better high school coach. You know what I'm saying? Is he he? I don't know, man. He he. The best coach, one of the best coaches I had him throughout my career though. He's the Nick Saban of high school to me. He made that team and the team I was on, it was a family, bro. And that's the most important thing in football. Cause once, once, you, once you're a family, you can't, you can't get beat. I met Greg when he was a student in my class his senior year. Uh, everybody has to take British Lit and I was his British Lit teacher the first semester of his senior year. So, uh, Miss Bridges, oh uh, man, the, the savior of, of my life, for real. I was just a kid that was just going through school, like, you know what I'm saying, just be able to eligible to play uh, for Lounge. And I never knew, like, at the time that you needed certain grades or, or certain classes to actually go D1. You know, I ended up having a class with her. I ended up, she caught me cheating off a test, and we just bonded ever since then, man. She, uh, she changed my whole life, though.
So he had a lot of studying to do. His mom worked early mornings. Um, I think she went in at like five. And so um, I've just, over a lot of different series of events, um, he came to live with us just to make sure that one, he got his homework done, he studied, and he was in class every day on time. Um, and that was kind of the arrangement that we made. Like she ended up talking to, you know, the principal and the superintendent asking for permission for me to actually come and stay with them to finish and complete my work because I, it, it was no way I can spend regular hours and doing what I was doing with football and everything to, to, to be able to be eligible to go D1. So uh, they agreed and, you know, I, I met her son when he was like five and, you know, her husband KB, it was like, it was, a, it was, it was perfect for me, you know what I'm saying? And sure. Now her son like taller than me now, but it was, it was a great family, man. They helped me out a lot, man. Just, I don't know, just, you know, being with my dad away, you know what I'm saying? Just stepping in and being with my mom was just working so much. They, uh, they just helped me a lot, man. It's, it's a blessing to, you know what I'm saying, have people like that in, in my life and in the world, period. Though. So uh, I ended up moving in with them and ended up staying with them and uh, I went to Florida State. Uh, my son will never be a Georgia Bulldog. He will always be a Seminole, um, always. That's, he was five. Because the relationship yes, was great. Yes, he was five and so that's all he knew. Um, he did not grow up going every Saturday in Athens. He went to Tallahassee. Um, so those were, were fun times, but Diane and his aunts and cousins, I mean, they were all there. Um, we all just, I mean, Saturdays were fun. I mean, it was football Saturday and we, we grilled different things and you know, we always had red velvet cupcakes and hamburgers and hot dogs and you know chili and it, it was, those were fun times. Greg was a guy, did, a lot of guys like to play ball. Greg liked everything with the ball. And if you practice, if you, like now you're in a 20 hour and back in those days, you know, you had a limited amount of practice. If you got mad at him and want to start a three hour practice over, he'd been the happiest guy on the field. His ability, I mean, he was totally in his element and I mean, effort, toughness, is, is competitive. A guy is, is, is competitive as anybody I've ever coached. I mean, he, he everything about it. I'm literally about to play in front of 90,000 people. Like, all I could do is pray. Like all I could do is pray. So I, I sat on my locker and I'm just sitting there and then, you know, Bobby comes in, Jimbo comes in, everybody talking, we talking. So, and all I can remember throughout my whole career is, is Jimbo saying, offense, every position ends with a, and everybody say kick. I'm like, dang, okay, okay. I, like this, it, it's like a whole, bro, but I'm gonna tell you. So when it was time to go out, Everything in the locker room cut off, lights cut off. And bro, it was just like a red light, just flashing, flashing, flashing. So I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> like, I can't, like, this, this, this is an experience right here. Like, this is, this is traditional, like, you know what I'm saying? So I end up going out the locker room and making a left. And you know, you, Jimbo had a sign up in, in Bobby. Bobby had a sign up here, it was attitude. We all test the attitude sign. Mm -hmm. But once you walk out that door after testing that sign, you was basically walking towards the tunnel. And bro, it was like the whole, everything was just dark and you still see this light, bro. And everybody just jumping. I'm like, oh man, <laughs> like this, this is crazy. So, so it was setting the mood yeah. for what would become yeah. a, a special night. A special, very special night. Greg, the first time you touched the ball that night, you're out on the field, tell us about it. What happens? I just hit a war chant, bro. That the war chant, uh, it just gave me like, oh man, like I have to, like it just, at that point in my career, it was like, this, this, like this, what I'm playing for, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So when I when I got the opportunity to uh, to touch the ball, I made something happen. So no wonder you had great memories. Your first night uh, playing collegiately at Florida State and you had a great game, and that just really served as the foundation for what would be a great three-year run for you mm -hmm. at Florida State. Mm -hmm. It was yeah, amazing. But it, it, it also taught me a lot too, though, for sure, of uh, just being humble, though. You know what I'm saying? It's hard to explain, really, because you want to be able to play your best all the time. Mm -hmm. But, you know, a, after I, you know, the athlete I am now, mm -hmm. it's always good to 
to handle your job and I don't want to say not be noticed, but handle your job low, you know what I mean? Not, not, cause I was, bro, I was, when, when I made a play, I was running at least 10, 20 yards downfield, just, you know what I'm saying? And, and really I could do more, you know what I'm saying? So it, that had, that had a lot to do with it. It's, it's, you know, you gotta be humble, bro. You know what I'm saying? This, this is just one play. You can make 10 more plays, you know what I'm saying? And that's what, that's what I had to figure out in my career though. After coming out of that freshman year, that's what it pe people expected me to do sophomore year and junior year. You get what I'm saying? So I had to, I had to, I had to play well to match that energy. You know what I'm saying? To match my freshman year, match what people see me as. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that that was the very difficult thing about it, though. Greg, you know, up to this point, things have really been going great for you. It's been like a, a dream sequence. FSU cornerback Greg Reed was arrested in South Georgia on... What could this arrest mean for Reed's spot on the team?